Welcome to our weekly program, The Inside Story of Chabad in America through the Mindel Archives. Uh, this is a second program, um, a continuation of last week. Last week we started to, we said the, it, it, it's a, the Tzavot, the people wrote to the Rebbe, the Rebbe should check over. And also we, uh, the, the Rebbe called Rabbi Mindel, Rabbi Chadekov, and uh, Rabbi Pekarski. This was in the month of Elul. Now today we'll continue that the Rebbe called them also in the month of, uh, I'm sorry, last week was in the month of Sivan. This week the Rebbe called them the Hayyim Shlishi B'Shabos, the Yudzayin Chaydash Elo Tovshin Mem Ches. After Mincha, he called them again to the room. And, um, and he, says, he said more or less the same as he said last, last time um, in Sivan. And about uh, about the tzavur and um, the, the rabbi, the Freydik rabbi took us in um, in his in his work, and about the peulis. I'm not going to go into this now because I want to read the tzavur. And the rabbi says that it should be that since you are the the Merkaz, so they established Merkaz on Chinuch Machni Israel. And on top of that, the rabbi said that I'm going to make now also a goodis chasid de chabad should be three pillars. Amud HaTavach Shal Tenuas Chabad. And then the Rebbe said, here it says, who should be Merkes, and who should be Machni Yisrael, and who should be Agud um, Chasid Chabad. So here it says that Merkes is Hanol Roshis should be in the hands of Rabbi Chadakov, and Rabbi Nisim Mindel, and Rabbi Sholem Mendel Simpson, and they're already all in Olam Hamas. Machane Yisrael should be in the hands of Rabbi Chadakov, Rabbi Nisim Mindel, and Yehuda Krinsky Sheyichia. He should have Arichas Yomim Bishonim Tevis. That, uh, that's Machane Yisrael. And a good Hasid Chabad should go into the hands of Rabbi Chadakov, Rabbi Zalman Gorari, and Rabbi David Raskin when they were there already in Olam Hamas. And also Benigeya Maimid, Benigeya Maimid, the Rebbe said, is also the, that's, that should be that should be given out to all three. This is more or less what, what Rabbi Mindel wrote here. Then Rabbi Mindel wrote the the Tzavoy in Hebrew, but I'm going to translate that into English. And that's the last will and testament of the Rebbe. And then I'm going to, um, after I finish re- reading, I'm going to translate it to English. I'll, I'll read what Rabbi Mindel wrote, his thought. I mean, who, who should know better than him? He was by the Rebbe, and the Rebbe asked him to write things down. This is all the handwriting, so I have it right here. Now I'm going to read the last will and testament first. We, the undersigned rabbis, M.A. Chadakov, Nisim Mindel, and the Rabbi Yitzchok Pekarski, do hereby testify that on the third day of the week, the 17th day of the month of Elul, in the year 5748, according to the Hebrew calendar corresponding on Tuesday, August 10, 1988, were requested to appear before His Eminence, the Lubavitch Rebbe Menachem Mendel Schneerson, son of the late Rabbi Levi Yitzchak Schneerson, residing at 1304 President Street, Brooklyn, New York, 11213, for the purpose of making his last will and testament. We found the above-named testator of sound uh, and disposing mind and memory, not under influence or stress of any kind, and completely competent to make a will. And the testator did make and constitute the following to be his last will and testament, thereby revoking any and all other wills by his uh, heretofore made, declaring as follows. It is considered auspicious for long life to make a will. I have invited the three of you, first and foremost Rabbi Chadakov and Nisim Indel, since you were among the first persons whom my saintly father-in-law, the Rebbe 
Yes, if Yitzchak Schneerson had made you close associate in the work, in his work, uh, in, in his work, ever since he came to the United States, bringing you over with him, and he invested you with the chief tasks and responsibilities in the administration of his newly founded organization, Merkel Yonichinuch Incorporated, Machna Yisrael Incorporated, and you have continued to serve in this capacity to this day. And with you, I have invited Rabbi Yisrael Yitzchak Pekarsky, Dean of the Central Lubavitcher Yeshiva Tebuchet Mimim, for the purpose of making my last will and testament in the presence of the three of you as under. Number, number one, I desire and direct, this is, I'm translating it from Hebrew, uh, then this is what the Rebbe said. Divri Tzadikim Kayomim Lo'ad. I desire and direct that all affairs of the Chabad Lubavitch movement, including all institutions, activities, programs, and so forth, continue to operate as function after my demise, as they have functioned till his row. In according with in according with established custom and practice that have been in place over many years. Number two, inasmuch as my saintly father-in-law, the Rebbe, over, uh, ever since he came to the United States, challenged most of his public activities through the chief two organizations which he founded here, namely the Merkel Yon Chinuch and Machin Israel, and all departments and branches. Inasmuch as upon succeeding my saintly father-in-law, the Rebbe, as head of the Chabad Lubavitch movement, I continue this way. I desire and direct that the same procedure be continued after my demise with the additional proviso, however, which I demand necess necessary to implement in recent years, namely, to renew and reactive the world Agudas Hasidei Chabad as the third main body, which together with the with the aforementioned uh, 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 mention, two chief organizations, Merkis Leon Chinuch Machni Israel, would con would uh, constitute the three central pillars of the Chabad Lubavitch movement through which its worldwide activities are conducted. Hence, it is my desire and directive that no change be made in this established uh, over and procedures. Now here, there's something here erased, which I can't, I cannot tell. Now, the English that I'm reading is a, a Rabbi Mindel translated from the Hebrew, but he wrote it in Hebrew, then he, he translated it in English. Number three, the above, the above stated directive that no change be made in the administration of the said organizations refers only to those executives who have been serving in their executive capacity for at least a period of three years to date. Okay, now the Rebbe writes, in Merkis the Yonechinuch, the chief administrative executive being Rabbi Chadakov, Nisim Mindel, and Sholem Mendel Simpson. And then Rabbi Chadakov writes over here with his handwriting, I can't read it really, but I, I, whoever can read it, uh, and that's I think that's, but Rabbi Chadakov wrote this. And these are, these are people that are still, that are already in Oilam Ames. In Machane Yisrael, the chief administrative ex executives being Rabbi Chadakov, Nisim Mindel, and Yehuda Krinsky, Again, Rabbi Chadikov wrote, and, you, and Rabbi Yehuda Krinsky Shereb Arichas Yomim Vishonim Tevis. In Agudas Hasidic Chabad, the chief administrative executive being Rabbi Chadikov, Rabbi Garari, and Rabbi David Raskin, and also it's erased over here, and, and uh, this is the original, and Rabbi Chadikov wrote something over here with his own handwriting. Now I'm going to continue. With regard to the Maimid funds donated as the Rebbe's discretion and disposition, it was the practice of my father-in-law, the Rebbe, the Rebbe, the Rebbe to, to divide the Maimit funds into three parts and turn them over to 
respectively, Merkaz Yon Chinuch, Machani Yisroel, and Lishkas Chashoyin, a special uh, fund which is one of the departments of Machani Yisroel. I too follow this as this established practice. It is my desire and directive that this practice be followed also uh, post mostly, namely that all contributions to my meat be divided into three parts, Merkis Yon Chinuch, Formachan Yisrael, and Lishkas Chashoin, respectively. Although it is my intent and confident hope that all the above directives will leave no room for any doubts and the like, yet in the event that there might nevertheless arise some doubt in regard to any matter or detail, I herbally uh, empower Rabbi Chadakov, Nisim Indel, and Yisrael Yitzchok Pikarski to determine and resolve the point under question absolutely, and so be it. Then the Rabbi writes, I herbally appoint Rabbi Chadakov, Nisim Indel, and Rabbi Yisrael uh, Yitzchok Pikarski as executors of this my will, uh, in witness of all that has been said and done above in our presence and in the presence of each other, uh, witnessing also the testator setting his hand and seal to this, his last will and testament, and then it says the names, but I don't see here signed, but I do see on the, here things were crossed out, were erased. I mean, like, I, it's impossible to know what it says over here. But Rabbi Kharikov did write on this piece of paper. Now, I want to read to you what Rabbi Mindel wrote after the Rebbe, after the Stalkus of the Rebbe. Now, as you know, that there was an English will written before. The English will the Rebbe signed, and that was written before. That, uh, that, so, uh, let me read this and I'll explain to you. This is a note from Rabbi Mindel. The Rebbe Hakam event, ev eventually intended to have two tzavos. I guess he knows. One dealing with the estate, Gash Mizdike, U.S., and one dealing with the spiritual administration of Lubavitch, Chabad movement to replace him after his demise since there was not going to be a successor a successor Rebbe, for he was the seventh and last generation in the uh, uninterrupted dy dy dynastic Rebbe, uh, Rebbes from the, from the founder of the Alter Rebbe. After the experience with the grandson of the previous Rebbe, who claimed a share of the estate, mainly library, of his grandfather, who can read here. The Rebbe wished to forestall any possible repetition of a similar claim. He executed a formal and legal last will and testament, and then the date of the Eagle Savoy, and that was done in February, after the Rebbe passed away. When he later prepared to make the spiritual will, which we just read, that's called the spiritual will, um, uh, formulated it as in the Rishima's Dvarim, a technical problem arose. If this was to be his last will and testament, thereby revoking any and all other wills uh, his for made, this would invalidate the previous will. And this is why he didn't sign the spiritual will officially. Uh, he doesn't write officially, but I, the way I see it, as it was f for formulated, as it, it was formulated, uh, it would have to be reworded so as not to revoke the financial the financial will. The Tama Comas for not signing the Start Savoy is as follows: to preserve the validity. Of the English, the Gashmish Diketzavoy, this one would have to be made in the form of an addend, uh, addendum, uh, addendum stating it 
it is, and a dead has to say, <coughs> and this would, he said later, this would have had to have another, another Yechides of the Rebbe. So it wasn't. So I, apparently, from, from, from my, what, what he wrote is, that the English Savoy was, was a, he did not, the English Savoy, the Rebbe didn't call a Rav. Because it, it didn't, it's not really a, a Savoy for Chassidim. It's a Gashmizdik, it's things for the Rebbe's Gashmizdik in Yonim, and he made an executor there, the Rebbe signed, everything. This Savoy is a Ruchmizdik at Savoy. This, this, that's why he needed Rabbi Pekarski, a, a, a Rav, and the Rebbe said it about Peh, and, uh, and, the, and, the, and the reason, I guess, that we don't see it signed, because then, then if you say this is the last will and testament, then it would validate the first time in English. And then the Rebbe didn't want that. That needed a, a different, a different Yechidus. Anyways, so this is what I wanted to share with you. Some people know this, some people <clears throat> don't. So, <clears throat> so since uh, today's Gimel Thomas, I thought I would read this, this uh, Tzavah. We should see the Rebbe, the Korev Mamish, the Rebbe, the Korev Mamish. Thank you.